Hey there everybody, it's Eternal Snowman here with another episode of TLT Recap and Analysis. And this week, I'll be or I'll be looking at this week's uh, Week 2 matchup, uh, me versus Akiko Yosuno and winners round 2. And um, the game, the tiers that were uh, chosen to be played were um, LC, RU, and NU. But... Um, we ended up playing LC first, chosen by um, my opponent because they were higher seed, and then we played RU after, and we did not play on you. Um, so in the LC game, I used this team because uh, I decided that I had not used this team before in one of these tours, and I wanted to bring it out. It's one of the best HO teams I've built. Uh, it's built around. It's technically built as a fighting spam team with me and Food Timber, and these Pokemon use knockoff to, and then it's built uh, with Carvana. So with this core, you can like pressure a lot of uh, typical Carvana checks, uh, such as like um, Fungus, because Fungus would come in and then it would, uh, it would be forced pretty much to take a knockoff from either me and Food or Timber unless they have a better answer to it. Even things like Spritzy um, are heavily pressured because I believe the calc is after rocks, it KOs with Z, uh, Z Psychic Fangs. So it can pressure a lot of um, typical Carvana checks. And then Weak Armor Onyx and Scarf Chincho are used for speed control. And then uh, the double speed boof boost gives a, lot, like, a strong win con. Um, so we can just jump right into the replay. And from team preview, it's pretty obvious that Carvana can become a really strong win condition because Psychic Fangs Oko's Krogunk, um, Waterfall Oko's these two. If I knock off uh, Star Use e e Eviolite, then Crunch will do a, a very significant portion, Z Psychic, and Doduo drops as well. So it's very strong. Um, and then also Onyx it doesn't really have a sh good answer on his team other than Fungus. And even then, Fungus is pressured. And so, also, Torchic has a really strong matchup as well. And so does Chincho. And so, pretty much everything on my team is going to be, like, really good against this team. I just have, like, a really good matchup. Only the things I need to fear, Doduo can actually put, put in a lot of work, depending on the set. Um, and then, same with Krogunk. But, um, because Mianfu is aggro, it doesn't wall me in. Uh, Chincho, it, Chincho gets walled, but because I need to predict correctly for these two, since it's Scarf, I can't, if I Volt Switch on, like, the Diglett, then it will be really troublesome. So, um, I lead with Manfu because I'm expecting Onyx, but even if he leads anything else, pretty much nothing on its team except for Doduo actually 1v1s Mian, and, um... So I can like trade knockoffs with like Krogunk and then go Acker, for example, against Krogunk. Um, and then Star you, I, I want the knock on it. So um, I want to make sure that like I get the correct knockoffs with Manfu and Timber this game to set up for like the late game sweep. Um, he switches out to Onyx just so that he um, doesn't lose because he knows that keeping the uh, Eviolite on um, Fungus is really important this game. So he trades, or he loses the Eviolite on Onyx because Onyx is his most dispensable member of this game. Since it loses to Torchix, uh, HP Grass, Chincho, Timber, Mianfu, and Carvana, and even Onyx to a, a degree. So he just sacks it to get rocks up. And then he goes Doduo. And I go hard Onyx because I'm weak armor. And um, he goes Brave Bird. And uh, I don't really know his set at this point. But since I'm faster, he's forced to switch out, so I can set up rocks for free. He goes star you, and then I EQ, because regardless of what happens, I'm guaranteed to get up rocks in this situation, because if he, uh, or trade for, or like at least trade for star you, so um, he, he earthquakes, and, or, so I'm just going to keep earthquaking to make sure that he doesn't get the spin for free, and then I explode on the ice beam, and trade for Staryu, which is really good. He kept trying to recover, be, uh, so in the case that I used Explosion turn 1 to prevent the spin, but I just wanted to Earthquake, so even if he 
spins, then I can still just uh, set up rocks. And and then I go, um, he goes, he goes Doduo, and I go uh, start Chincho because pretty much against everyone, every mod on his team, Chincho is safe because I can Volt Switch on uh, these two, and I can outspeed and kill Diglett. Uh, and only Fungus would be a bad matchup, but I can still Volt Switch out of it. And so I Ice Beam on Krogunk. Or sorry, I Ice Beam on Dodua because everything on his team is hit by Ice Beam. So he um, goes Fungus, and then I Ice Beam on the Krogunk. And I actually get a Freeze. It reveals Eviolite, and I think this is actually like a defensive variant of Krogunk. I'm not really sure. But this is a lot, like really little damage. Um, which is unfortunate for him, and uh, so I just go Mian because he, in the case that he unthaws, then that'd be really bad because I need Chincho to be healthy since it sweeps like everything else. And so I just go Mian and then Acro a couple times. And then he goes Diglip. This is kind of weird because Mianfu is, always lives this, so he pretty much just trades his Diglip for like a little bit of chip because I actually heal a lot of it with, back with Drain Punch. And then he goes Doduo, which is kind of weird because you could have just went Doduo to begin with instead of... I guess he try, wanted to try to trap Mian, but like without calcing, I don't know how it... Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and then Mian drops, and then I can just go Chincho and click Ice Beam a couple times. And then I just go Carvana and the rest of this game is over. It was over from like a while ago. Um, pretty much since Star you dro dropped, it was pretty much guaranteed that I was going to win because... Everything else died to Carvana. Um, so I just played to my win conditions and played solid and won the game. So the next game was RU. And in RU, um, I brought this team, which is an HO team. Uh, once again, playing more HO because it's really easy to play HO in tiers that I don't know. Another team that... Uh, I did say that I wasn't really confident in playing RU and like multiple videos before, but I w heard from multiple sources that uh, Akiko Yosuno was better at OU and UU, so I was like, okay, uh, let's just play RU and see. Um, I actually realized later that like Mega Steelix was like allowed in the tier, which would really fuck. Like if I if I if they brought Mega Steelix versus me. I was pretty much screwed because it hardwalls Honchkrow pretty much. Like, Superpower doesn't really do enough to not warrant it switching in since it doesn't have a life form. Pretty much just walls Espeon as well and Cloyster and DNC. And his Cavalier is like a soft answer because I need to boost on it and then hit it with a Mega Horn. And then Rotom is the only one that actually can threaten Steelix on a reliable basis. And then. So it's like really bad for me. Um, but it's just classic HO, pretty much. Uh, I don't know if it's classic, but one rock setter that uh, pressures defensive answers with toxic. So stuff like Milotic and stuff will get pressured by toxic. Uh, Cloister is a late game win condition, and it's sashed because I have Espeon, so I can play aggressive against rock setters, uh, like Gligar and stuff. And then Honchkrow is a win condition with Sucker Punch and Pursuit to trap stuff. Since Pursuit actually traps a lot of the answers to uh, Espeon. And Specs Espeon is also like a strong wall breaker. Um, and then Escavalier is to pressure a lot of defensive answers. It actually doesn't act as a win condition because it's too slow. But it's um, it's good to pressure a lot of the defensive mons in the tier that would that like would prevent other sweeps like Registeel and stuff. Because actually Escavalier beats Registeel. Um, or heavily pressures it and opposing Escavalier. And then Rotom is a speed control mon, and it's also a trick because um, the double trick on this team actually uh, allows it to be a lot of the defensive answers like Gligar and um, Gligar and Registeel, Gligar for Rotom and Registeel for Espeon and that kind of, and Doeblade and that kind of stuff, so that I don't just auto lose to those Pokemon. So we can jump into the replay. Um, so just off, like looking at the team. Espeon puts in a shit ton of work, like, his only Espeon answers are, um, okay, so, depending on the Flygon set, it could be Scarf, which could, uh, check Espeon, Virizion gets just demolished at every point, um, 
for alligator just needs a little bit of chip and then it dies and then obviously espion beats um Gligar very solid and then uh escavalier can't switch in multiple times because it's um it's not bulky enough and it has no reliable recovery and then meloetto is the solid espion check however it gets trapped by honchkrow and escavalier so it needs it, it like if i do trap it then espion can like reign free um and then Cloister is also a really strong win condition because his Cloister answer is Escavalier, but it's also pressured to check Espeon. Um, so, like, if I just use that to my advantage, uh, Cloister can pull off a sweep because he does have three weak ice, weak to ice him, and then Mellow isn't a check. And for Alligator, just needs a bit of chip. And so, I lead off with Deancey because I just want rocks up to ch start chipping stuff but he goes a Scavalier so I have to go hard Rotom. Uh, looking at my team compared to his I'm actually somewhat weak to a Scavalier um, however the thing is that since it's forced to check a lot of things uh, even if I trade damage against a Scavalier then like with my own Scavalier like if I trade those two Pokemon or like heavily weaken his it's much more advantageous for me. Um, so he goes Flygon, and I trick, so he reveals Choice Scarf, so this is kind of awkward. And so I just go DNC, expecting uh, a Stone Edge, or fearing the Stone Edge. And then he actually uh, clicks U-Turn, which is, like, really brave. And so um, he goes Escavalier against my DNC, and then I'm going Escavalier here. At this point, I think this is a really bad play by him, because I SD expecting him to go Gligar. And he actually, uh, he actually Iron Heads again, and he Iron Heads again here, um, and I Mega Horn, and this is like pretty much a game winning play by me because, or like not like a play by me, but like it's a game winning turn because pretty much no matter what happens after this, I win, since um, if I play it like uh, on a decent level because Escavalier, since Escavalier is weakened, um. I have pretty much both my win cons in Cloister and Espeon can like put in a, sh a ton of work and Honchkrow as well since Escavalier was needed to check a lot of his a lot of my team so um, I just switch out because I, kn I know he's faster I'm running zero speed and uh, he I forced the Rotom out and I Volt switch here and since he goes mellow to take the hit um, I can go Honchkrow because of this yeah, I just trap it. So, pretty much, um, it's technically a 50-50 between Pursuit and Sucker, but the thing is, I don't actually need health on Honchkrow, and the, the cow or, like, the this calc makes it seem like Mellow is, um, AV. I'm pretty sure it's AV, actually, uh, based on the Rotom calc, and so, uh, since I don't need health on Honchkrow, I just need to win one of the two 50-50s that happened here. I win the first one, and I get the Pursuit. And also, he's not really expecting Pursuit on Honchkrow, so, um, possibly, so, uh, I don't get it, um, and then, so I do get the trap on Mellow, at this point, Espeon pretty much just kill, gets a kill every time it comes in, and, uh, I just go hard Espeon on, uh, Gligar, because Honchkrow can't beat Gligar 1v1, since Gligar runs enough speed to outspeed it, and my Z-move doesn't do enough to Oko, so I just... Uh, switch into Espeon on the Stealth Rocks, and then I just, I was expecting either Stealth Rocks or Toxic there, and then um, I get a Psychic, and then I get a kill on a Scavalier, which is fine, um, and then he goes Flygon, since he revealed Scar further, he's just going to click U-Turn, so I'm just going to go Eska, and then um, sack, I was planning to sack it, but he goes Gligar, so I can't let him just like roost up for free, and so I go Cloister here, because even if he SRs, since he revealed SR, um, I don't care if it gets up anymore if Cloister gets in here because previously I didn't want to go hard Cloister on the Gligar um, because I didn't have Stealth Rocks up and I thought that with Stealth Rocks up I could Oko for Alligator but it ended up that I was wrong. Um, so he Toxics the Cloister, um, I don't get to use my Focus Sash but um, I just take out the Gligar and it turns out, like, I think this is a bulky for Alligator set, because it didn't Oko the, uh, here. But he trades the for Alligator for Cloister, uh, because Superpower doesn't activate the Sheer Force. And so I can just go Rotom here, because no matter what happens, um, I'm, like, I, I can just click a moves and get kills. So he goes Flygon, which is even better for me, 
because I have HP Ice, and so I'm just going to HP Ice, and then um, I get, even if he goes Verizio on there, it takes Chip, and so I, I go hard SB on here because no matter what happens, even if he, like, I don't know, Z, Z Rocky MZs or, like, Stone Edges me or whatever, I still have um, read him in the back, and, like, pretty much everything is health, full health. So I just want to prevent him from SDing. I mean, it really didn't matter. As long, I mean, it could potentially have been a throw play. I don't, I don't really know, but um, yeah, I just want to argue pretty solid. Sorry, um, I just want to argue pretty solid. Brought a strong HO team, and he didn't have anything to deal with it. He didn't really bring defensive steals, which is what this team like quote-unquote struggles with. Um, Escavalier is kind of a defensive steal, but he brought an offensive variant of it and played it, like, pretty badly, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, so I won my round two match 2-0, and um, that's pretty much it. The teams will be linked in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for another TLT recap and analysis.